Hi, this is Dave and welcome to To The Table and today we are going to be taking a look at a project that is currently on Kickstarter. It is a Sabatile Isles of Hexote from Grizzly Forge and in this game two to six players are going to be playing different tribes on this Isle of Hexote trying to harness the power of the six and maneuvering through the treachery that lies ahead of them and they're wanting to be the first one to get into the temple and grab the correct totem and bring it back to their village. Let's take a look at the game, how it's played, and I'll come back and I'll share my thoughts. Okay, here I have a prototype version of Sabatile Isles of Hexote set up for six players. The game is ready to go. Before we get into that, let me quickly talk about the components and how the game is set up and then I'll show you how it's played. So the first thing that we have for our components is we have a modular board that we put together that is going to form the area in which all of these other tiles are going to be placed and you can see the different spaces are marked out by these different hexes. In the center there's going to be a place for our temple and there are spaces around the edge that are numbered as well and we'll use that for the number of players in the game. Now on the game board itself the surrounding edge represents land as you can see it's all marked out and that's going to be important because we will be placing our village tile there. Each player is going to receive a village tile along with a spirit animal that is going to go along with the tribe that they are playing. Now, each player will receive their own player board that corresponds to the tribe that they are playing. And on here uh, explains what all of these different tiles out here on the back side are different uh, symbols and these are the different actions that are on there. Now each player is going to receive 11 tiles, that's how many there are here, the same tiles. The only difference is that for the starting ones their, sim their color will be around the border. Space for their leftover tiles for their hand and then on the back we have uh, a player reference guide that is going to talk about what they're doing on their turn and the two different phases of their turn movement and actions. So uh, again the players are going to receive 11 tiles each and then finally in one of these spaces because they're randomly set up right now is going to be um, a totem inside that corresponds to each of the different tribes. We don't know where they are, we're going to have to find out as we play the game. Anyways, at setup, the players are going to take eight of their 11 tiles and they are going to, uh, in turn order, strategically place the tiles on the game board uh, to build up this island. So this is going to start off with the first, we we'll determine who the first player is and they will place first and then going in a counterclockwise direction players are going to build this island. And then whoever is the last player to place a tile will be the first player to start actually their turn and uh, doing their movement and actions and we will play in a clockwise direction. Now there are also a number of additional tiles that are set up off to the side here and form this stock. So there will be more tiles coming out in the game and they are also going to have the same symbols underneath them as we saw on our player board. And then finally, the game comes with uh, a die that will be used for movement. So, we've got the whole uh, game board set up. Let's talk about how the game is played. Okay, let me show you how the game is played. And we're gonna start off with the uh, orange player as they were the last one to place uh, a tile during setup and so, uh, they're going to be the first one to take their turn. Now on a player's turn, there are two phases to the turn. There's a movement phase and an action phase. And players can choose the order in which uh, they want to resolve it. Either they can move first and then take an action or take an action and then move first. And so uh, we're going to choose to go ahead and move first. And so what will happen is we roll the six-sided die and we look at the number. And this is a number five that came up. And this is going to tell me that I can move up to five spaces on the, the uh, game board. Uh, I don't have to move the full five, it just tells me the limit. And each of these tiles is divided up into three different spaces. And so um, I'm going to choose to move the full five and go one, two, three, four, five. Now again, I'm trying to remember which tiles I place on the board, which are going to be beneficial, but other players have placed some things that are going to probably be not so uh, good. But anyways, I'm going to move here. And what I'll do is I'll flip this over. And it's one of my tiles. 
and this is uh, terraform and this means that I can take and view three tiles from the deck and place them anywhere on the board and so what I'll do is draw three tiles from the uh, reserve deck off to the side and I'm going to look at them and I can place them anywhere on the board so I have to look at these different symbols this one uh, is wildfire. This will destroy uh, that tile and all surrounding tiles. This is going to be really, really nasty. And I'm going to uh, choose to place this right here uh, because this could severely hamper uh, the progress of the yellow player and the red player over there. And then um, we have this particular tile right here. This is survey the land. This is going to allow me to look at some tiles and uh, replace them on the game board. Something that I might find useful. Maybe I'll throw this uh, down here a little bit. And finally this one is uh, the bog and this is going to cause uh, somebody to have um, slowed down movement and I'll probably place this over here on the game board. So I gotta try and remember where I placed all these. So now uh, that I have done that what I will do is this tile gets discarded and I'll draw a tile from the uh, the reserve and place it on there and then anywhere on this I can choose to place my piece I'll place it right there. Now I can choose to take an action and uh, I have four different things that I can choose to do when I'm in most of the spaces on the board and there's two additional actions that I can take if I'm in the center space. And so uh, the first thing that I can choose to do is I can uh, take a tile. And so I can choose to draw any tile that I want to from this game board and uh, put it in my hand. And uh, so if I chose to do that, maybe I might want to take this one and uh, try to set a trap for the players here. But they might think that something's up if I place this one down and then take one. So that's one of the things that they can uh, consider. But if I took this tile, I would put it into my hand and I'd be able to use it later on. Uh, another thing that I can choose to do is I can place a tile. I take one of the tiles from my hand, uh, looking at it and uh, placing it on the game board where I see fit, depending on if it's be a good tile for me or a bad tile for somebody else. I can place it on the board. Maybe I wanted to place that there. That's one thing that I can do. If I make my way up to one of these center spaces uh, in the temple, I can choose to, as my action, to uh, pick up a totem. And uh, when I do that, um, I would be able to place this and put that in there. And then uh, also when I'm moving around, I can choose to uh, drop off, uh, I can drop off a totem. Um, so if I wanted to put it on a space to maybe set a trap, I could choose to do that, but I pick one up. Now, uh, the final uh, action that we can do in most of the spaces is to attempt a steal. So let's say that I pick this one up and I don't know what the inside of this is. And I won't be able to open this up and look at it until I move to any of the village tiles that are on the outside of the game board. But specifically, if it's the right one, I want to be able to uh, move to this particular space. And uh, there are tiles that will allow me to look at this without being at a village. So it's uh, we want to be able to use ones called Ancient Vision, which would be really, really nice to find. But let's say, for example, I was moving my way back here, and this blue player was up and moved on to the same tile as me. Now, you cannot be in the same space unless there's something that allows you to, but right next to each other on the same tile is okay. As an action, you could choose to attempt to steal the totem. So if it was the blue player's turn, how would happen? They use that as their action. We roll a die. The blue player rolled a four, and the uh, orange player rolled a four. And so we have a tie. In case of a tie, then uh, the tie will go to the attacker. So what happened is this blue player would actually be able to steal this totem from the orange player. And so now he has it in his, um, his possession. Now there are two additional actions that could be taken. Um, if we were in the center space, we could do what's called sacrifice. And what I could do is sacrifice one of the tiles from my hand, discard it, in order to have an additional movement phase. Or uh, the other thing that I can do is on my turn, I can use my action to uh, collect two tiles from uh, the reserve and put them in my hand. So it's a way to get additional tiles. Now there is a hand limit of six tiles that we can have in our hand. And so uh, what's going to happen now is uh, someone should pick up a totem. You're going to want to go to a village or uncover the, uh, uncover the uh, 
ancient vision tile but once you're on one of the village tiles you can open it up and you can actually look in it and see what it is and we see that this happens to be the yellow one and so this is not the correct one so the player would just say play continues and maybe later on in the game they can move around drop it off on a tile that might be bad and continue to move around uh, trying to get the correct totems and getting back um, to their to their things so let's say for example the orange one was to pick this one up and they were going to move back hopefully this is the right one and they could open it up nope it's not the right one and they'll say play continues again you can move it around um, and we're going to set up the game board and again you're trying to be the one to be able to get back with the right totem so uh, let's say for example this yellow player moved and picked this up and they move to this blue village and they opened it up and they go, oh, this is the yellow one. And they don't say play continues. Well, they can say play continues, but they can move along and uh, they can deceive whatever they want to do. And they want to try to be the first one to get all the way back. Now, uh, that's essentially the basis of the game. What are the different actions that we can take? And let me talk about uh, the different tiles that we have in the game. Uh, because there's different things that will pop up and you saw terraform and that was able to take and view some tiles we have this bog that is going to um, have a slow down for movement and it says it can be destroyed um, this wildfire will destroy it we have this holy ground and it says it's permanent and a tile once it's activated it cannot be destroyed or moved so if we have a spot that we flip over that's holy ground i think there was one right here this now becomes permanent it can't be moved and it counts as one space on the game board we also have uh, this mystical exchange you can swap any two players locations it's pretty nice to move people around especially if you think that uh, maybe this yellow player was getting close and all of a sudden you decide you know what hey i'm gonna swap you with this player here and uh, that could really uh, hinder their progress we have this surveying the land. This allows you to view tiles and you can move things around. We have this secret passage, which allows you to go to the center of the temple. If uh, other secret passages are open, you can choose to move uh, to the temple or any of the other secret passages. And so once they flip those, stay on the board. However, they could be destroyed if you have a wildfire. Destroy this tile and all surrounding tiles. And we have adrenaline rush, extra dice for movement. You can activate it right away, or you can place it on your player card for future use. So that's kind of a nice one uh, to be able to use for later on. Earth mover, select a tile or base, and then roll uh, dice to move it through open spaces. Um, we have a trickster, swap any two totems, ancient vision, view any totems. So lots of different, um, lots of different tiles that do different things on the game board. So, but essentially what you're going to want to do is be the first one to uh, successfully grab the right totem and make it all the way back to your village and open it up and have the correct one and you win the game. And that is how you play Sabatile. All right, let's talk about Sabatile. And the first thing uh, that I want to do is share a little bit of information about where this game came from. Now, there's an organization um, here in Illinois down uh, based around the University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana. It's called Kudo Plays. It stands for Champaign-Urbana Design Organization. And this game came out of there. They have um, a design competition every year. Uh, they will have these teams uh, that come together and uh, they will work on a project, they will create a game, they submit it, uh, it's judged, and uh, some of them receive awards. This one, I believe, won the Marketability Award. I knew know that it was an award winner. And then after that, the game then goes on to a grand exhibition that the public can come out and see and play the game. And uh, so uh, the designers, who have now become uh, Grizzly Forged, have decided to take this game a step further and trying to get it out into the general public. Now, I got a chance to play uh, a version of this game back in September of 2015. One of the designers had brought the, the game up to a local game store uh, by my house, and uh, we were there and a group of friends. And uh, they happened to have this game out. We got a chance to play it, and we had a lot of fun with it. And the designer has since made some changes to it. I think he improved the game and contacted me and was wondering if I would take a look at it. Of course, I said yes. And uh, so here we are now with Sabatile. And I believe in this game that it is going to appeal to a broad spectrum of players because of the different elements that this game brings. Now, the first thing, I know that this will appeal to uh, families because especially in my house, the kids really like this. And it reminds me a lot 
of Survive, Escape from Atlantis. They both have a take that aspect to it, and they both have uh, the the whole thing of not knowing what's underneath uh, the tiles. And so I think that there's some inspiration that comes from there. It also reminds me a little bit of like Forbidden um, Island and then also a little bit of the game Stratego because as you're placing the, game, the, the tiles up, you know where they're at and what's underneath them, but your opponents don't. And that's kind of like how um, the game Stratego goes. And so uh, this game is uh, sort of like a, has a, a capture the flag feel, you're, and, but it's also a race. You're trying to race... Uh, up and be the first one to get your totem and get all the way back and so I think a lot of those things those elements are going to appeal to uh, families that are playing especially with the take that and the whole sabotage thing with this game is built around uh, I'm, I think that families will have a lot of fun with that because I think the kids when they're playing they like to see that ha ha I did that to you or oh why did you do that to me uh, type of thing and so I think that that's going to appeal to the families but yet there's also a strategy and stuff that's going on that it's not going to bore them it's going to keep players engaged. Now there's a lot more that this game will reveal to uh, more serious gamers that this game uh, even opens up and appeals to them and then it goes on to these things of how you're going to manage um, your hand and then these tiles and placing these tiles on the game board is so it, it's really key even at setup because uh, you're thinking about you have 11 tiles three of them you're gonna hold back which of the three you're gonna hold back where are you going to place the tiles on the game board? Are you going to use them to build a completely safe path for yourself to move through? Uh, or are you going to use some of those good tiles to maybe bluff some with your, your opponents and maybe think that uh, you've set a trap for them? So you have those things that are going through your mind. Um, and then later on, as you're acquiring more tiles, what are you going to do with them? Are you know, a, you know, are you going to spend the time to uh, use them to benefit yourself, or are you really going to specifically go after trying to hammer it and stick it to your opponents? Um, and so that's going to open up even some more things. What you're going to do on your turn and how you're going to plan your strategy? Are you going to be uh, streamlining and just trying to be get in and get out as quick as you can? Uh, because this is a race, or are you going to allow yourself to uh, mess with your opponent and really put them in a position where you're going to have, be able to have a run of the board a little bit later on, and they're going to have to be spending a lot of their actions trying to rebuild their path or get themselves out of a jam. Uh, so you have two different things to think about. Now, just as much as you're trying to mess with your opponents, they're going to be trying to get you, and if they see you strictly going on the fast track, you're going to have everybody ganging up on you. And so uh, that's one of the things that you're going to have to weigh in this game. Another uh, element of this game is the pressing your luck. Uh, you have to re you know, keep in mind that as you're crossing over onto these tiles, if you didn't place them there, you're not really sure what's going on. So you have this whole press your luck aspect. You have a memory aspect that's going on, trying to remember where the tiles are that you placed on the game board. And then finally, you know, you have this little bit of unknown as you go and you grab one of the totems and you're trying to get out. Um, you don't really know what's in there. However, there are uh, a couple of things that uh, are built into the game that help keep the game moving along and keep it from overstaying its welcome. And it's one of the tiles, the Ancient Vision tile. If you're able to uncover that, uh, you're able to view any totem so you can look at the one that's in your basket without having to go all the way back to one of the villages. Um, and then also the fact that it's like you could go to any village to open it up uh, and look at it. And so uh, you have that. A couple of things too in the game then is once you know what you're carrying, it's what you use with that information. You can be truthful and say, ha, ah, it's mine, you know, or, or uh, and make them uh, try to mess with me, and, and um, but maybe you're lying, you know. And so you've got a lot of different things to think about when you're playing the game. And so uh, there's a lot of strategy too that, un that uh, unveils itself as you're playing the game. Uh, I like the amount of time that the game takes to play. Uh, it doesn't overstay its welcome. It usually can be done in about an hour, sometimes uh, shorter, sometimes a little bit longer, but right around that 60 minutes, I feel comfortable with this game being played. Um, it scales very well, depending upon the number of players. So if you're with a full complement of players, the island is very large and lots to move through. Uh, with less players, it's a little bit smaller, so the paths are a little bit shorter for you to move through. Um, so, but overall, I think the game is a very, very uh, good design. I love the fact that uh, they did build a fun game built specifically around a take that aspect, this whole sabotage idea, and I really like that. 
So uh, that's one of the things that they've done. Now they're hoping to build this uh, build this game and bring it into production. And uh, one of the things that I uh, wanted to mention is I had the prototype out uh, that they're looking to do uh, with the game pieces. And I just have uh, the board is modular, like I said, so it comes up into pieces like this. And what they're hoping to do is um, if they have enough in their funding is to actually have um, like a, a recessed board, like a double layer like this so that when the tiles go in there, they don't move around. And so this would be a really, really nice uh, feature. A lot of times when you're playing even like games like Catan, people are playing buying the tray that holds everything in. This would be built in the game board. So uh, a double layer board is kind of nice, one of the things that they're hoping to uh, achieve. And so uh, these guys have plans to uh, bring a really, really good product to the marketplace. I think they have a really, really good design, and uh, I certainly appreciate what they have done, and uh, we've had a lot of fun with this one. And so uh, this is Sabatile, definitely uh, a really, really well done project and a fun game. And if you're interested in uh, checking it out for yourself and supporting it, I'll have a link in the video description below. You can click on that. It'll take you over to the Kickstarter page, and you can pledge the game for yourself. All right, that's it for now, and uh, join me again next time as we take a look at another game and see how it makes it to the table. Bye-bye.